Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Living Lives. Today, I have a, a guest who I met recently who is, I think he's fascinating to listen to. He's a master storyteller. His name is Pleasant to Spain. He's an international storyteller, world traveler, uh, author of 18 multicultural story collections and picture books. He performed in more than 3,000 schools, theaters, festivals, libraries, and churches in the United States, Canada, Mexico, Thailand, Southeast Asia, and Central America, and has been a featured performer three times at the National Storytelling Festival in Jonesboro, Tennessee. He's taught speech, literature, drama for six years at the University of Massachusetts, the University of Colorado, and the University of Seattle, before embarking on a career as a professional oral storyteller and author. He also creates original stories for major educational publishers such as Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. His signature story, Old Joe and the Carpenter, was chosen for an IBM-sponsored placement into every elementary school library in the United States. He holds a Bachelor's of Arts in English and Public Speaking and a Master's degree in Rhetoric and Public Address and the Oral Interpretation of Literature, both from Southern Illinois University. In 72, he made the decision to become a professional storyteller. In addition to oral storytelling at local venues, he wrote a weekly column featuring a wide range of stories for the Seattle Times. In 70, 1975, he created Pleasant Journeys, a weekly storytelling television show for children, which aired on the NBC affiliate King TV, and was named Seattle's resident storyteller by the city's mayor. During his storytelling career, Pleasant has traveled to 36 countries and he gathered uh, traditional and true stories, performed them along the way, and wrote 18 books. In 2017, he chose Northern Thailand as his home base, and he recently relocated to upstate New York. So I'd like to welcome uh, Pleasant to Spain to the show. Hi, Wayne. Hey I'm there. Glad to be here. Thanks for joining us. So how are, you know, I, I was looking at your new book, Vagabond Tales, in search of light and life. And I, I read the introduction and I just want to read it now, if you don't mind me reading from your book. No, uh, no. It, and it really resonated with me being an adventurer and, uh, and liking to connect with people and travel. Um, you wrote, a vagabond moves from place to place, going wherever impulse leads. The word's origin is from the Latin word vagary to wander, a restless soul. I've wandered nearly my entire life, visited 37 countries, lived in eight U.S. states, and created home and heart 39 times. I've explored most of the United States and Canada, Mexico, Central America, and Thailand. A true vagabond, I've always traveled alone with a mission to seek and find. My lasting treasures discovered through my travels are traditional and true stories of near and far. And to me, that resonates a lot because I've also been to about 37 different countries and I've been to all the states in the United States as well. Yeah. So uh, just reading that uh, definitely uh, formed a kinship with you, even without having discussed all of that, you know, in the, in the brief time that we've chatted beforehand. Right. 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 So how has that, um, how has that affected, affected you know what you're what you're going to be doing going forward are you going to um, i know you moved back to the to upstate new york for a, a period of time right well covid changed everything for so many of mm -hmm. us and my home base in northern thailand Chiang Mai, uh, was an ideal location to live oh maybe seven eight months a year and then to come up here to the Easton Mountain Retreat Center and uh, spend four or five months. That was the plan. And then the plan, uh, because of COVID and the country of Thailand, just closed the borders. And it was a smart thing to do. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't even get out for almost a year. And, and now that I am out, I know I'm not going back to live. I will now create a new home base. And uh, so the effect has been, oh, more adventures ahead. <laughs> <laughs> more challenges. Uh, the vagabond aspect of being a traveler in life has so much more to do with everything than just location. But mm -hmm. 
perspective and the people that we meet along the way and the friendships that we make, the kinships. Um, so in many ways, it's been a positive effect. Great. And I'm all about connections. You know, my new brand is Adventures and Connections. So I like to make connections with people and different cultures. I always like to make learn about different cultures wherever I've gone. And people always ask me, you know, what where's the favorite place you've ever been? And I can't answer that because <laughs> it really is a place with the person it's you know it's attending um a public sauna in um finland with my friend sari it was hiking the swiss alps with my friend rosemary and her two her two kids it was you know everything involves the people that i've been you know where i visited yeah so it's it's definitely um i i get it <laughs> the vagabond piece <laughs> <laughs> and that resonates with me. So yeah. the, the whole idea of we travel, even if we're alone, we're not alone ever. Yes. And there are always people that we meet, we run into. I have never been afraid to go into a cafe in another country with another culture and to sit down at a table and know that others will join me. And a conversation will begin. Where are you from? Why are you here? And mm -hmm. I ask questions as well. And before long, oh, <laughs> we have these things in common. And wow, we are human beings together on this journey. Yes. Yes. I'd like to tell a little story. Okay. And uh, it is from uh, the new book, uh, Vagabond Tales in Search of Light and Life. And it, it deals with birth, uh, the first chapter. And in this story, it's, it's from Egypt and in the uh, celebrated city of Alexandria long, long ago, a young king began to rule and he wanted more than anything to rule well, to rule wisely. And so he, he called upon his philosophers, his mathematicians, his architects, his artists. He gathered them together in the magnificent throne room. And he said, I am commissioning all of you to go out into the wide world, the known world. I want you to explore and ask questions and, and meet others and provide me with the wisdom of the world so that I can rule more wisely. Wow, <laughs> what a journey to take on. And they did. But no one realized that it would take 20 long years before they returned to Alexandria. And they had so many books and works of art and mechanical items. And, and uh, they even brought some wise people back with them. <laughs> And the king, he was overwhelmed. He was middle-aged at this point. And he thought, oh, he, he said, I am so busy ruling this large kingdom. There's no way that I can absorb all of this wisdom. I, I have a new mission. I want all of you to work together. And I want you to compile this knowledge into a single book. And I... We'll take the time to read that, and then I will have the wisdom I seek. Well, no one realized it would take them working day and night, all of those good folk, 20 more years to finally assemble the wisdom into a single tome. And they presented it to the now aged king and Oh, it was a thick volume <laughs> with small lettering written on both sides of every page. And he was impressed and also depressed. My eyes are weak. <laughs> My legs no longer hold me up. Call upon the storyteller. Bring him to me now. And the storyteller arrived and the king said, I will give you up to three weeks to read this important book and then come to me and tell me the story. 
and three weeks later, the storyteller arrived. The king was failing. He was in his bed, and the storyteller sat on a stool at his bedside, and he told him this story. They were born, your majesty, and they lived. <laughs> And they knew, well, they learned, and they loved, and, and of course, they experienced sorrow and joy. And, and some, well, they died young, but others, like you, sire, they lived long lives. And they, too, died. And then, again, they were born. And in that silence that followed, the king took his final breath and there was a contented smile upon his face. And there ends my story. It mm. definitely puts perspective on um, you know, the connections that we make and the importance of living, you know, just living yeah. our lives. Living our lives and being who we are in this life. And the reason that I put that story into the first chapter of birth and, and then tell my birth story and then the childhood, all of that, I have a and this is my belief, I expect no one else to accept it. My experiences, especially with my spiritual quest for light and life in all these years, has led me to experience and feel, and now for me know, that we have lived many lives, but only one life is important, and that is this life, right here, right now, this breath. This is what counts. The others, However difficult, however joyful, however sorrowful, how e easy <laughs> or and probably hard because life is struggle. But they got us here. And here mm -hmm. we are now making these connections. Yeah, so, it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's interesting because I sign off the show every week with, go out and make a connection and live your best lives. So it's, it really does show us to, to really look at where we are now, forget about the past. Don't worry about the future, but live now. And when we do that, we can uh, really enjoy the present, take the present as a present. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you know, make the present a present. You get to unwrap it every morning. <laughs> yes, you get to unwrap it every day, every second. So it's it really is, you know, it's uh it's definitely um if we look at it that way, it can be it bring a lot of joy and bring a lot of um contentment. And it's it's also being mindful of what is happening now and to us. That, that lets us do that in a more um, substantial and more fulfilling way. Exactly. And I now am an old man. <laughs> I'm a happy old man. <laughs> At age 77, I uh, awake in the morning and I think, well, you know, my body feels a little bit old, but oh, my breath is young. Therein, for me, with a meditation practice now of almost 50 years, uh, I, mean, I am about the breath of the morning, which is going to lead me through the day and then take me into the evening. And whenever I feel that, whoa, this may be a little too much, this may be <clears throat> not a really good experience that I'm having, or, or mm -hmm. I driving down the road and someone cuts me off what i realize is that i'm still here and i can breathe and allow that breath 
to create the next one and the one to follow after that. For <laughs> what my meditation has taught me is the breath is the beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is also the end. The very word inhalation comes from the Greek root in spiritus, to take mm -hmm. in spirit. And expiritus, to let it go. go. Our very first breath when we came into our bodies, that first breath, our soul, came into our body in spiritus, spirit as well. And, and when we leave, you know, uh, our soul <laughs> has another place to be when the body is finished, is complete. And now at this age, I'm experiencing uh, not only the power, but the joy of breathing. Mm -hmm. And when I meet others, what I usually do is just very unceremoniously or unconsciously, I, I kind of tune in to his or her breath just for a moment and see if there is a connection there. And that's, they're a all great, nice. that's a great way to connect is to breathe at the same rate as someone else. Right. Because it just helps align all of the senses yes. and it's subconscious. You don't even, the other person might not even realize you're doing it, but it definitely brings a connection to the, um, the interaction that, uh, you know. Uh, and it's not intrusive, as you said. It's it, it's not right. intrusive. It's just, but, but it is about noticing. Yes. Uh, I'll share something that I've learned many years ago with an audience uh, and audiences. Whenever I'm introduced, and I may be up on stage or I will then walk on stage, but when I've been introduced, I do not go right up to the mic and begin speaking. The first thing I do is walk up to the mic and I simply look at my listeners. They're giving me such a gift and they're going to listen and spend their time and energy with my stories. Oh, what is it? That's such a gift. So I, I look, I, I see you. And then I take in my own first real breath and the audience members will too. We'll all sort of breathe together and let that breath go. And that is the time to begin with the first words because we're breathing together. That actually is, is good life advice for any type of interaction, yes. be it a business interaction or a personal interaction or with your spouse or your loved ones. It's a great way of just making that initial connection and setting the stage to go further. And when you have that connection up front, even if it's an adversarial relationship, by doing that, you just put that underpinning of connection there that can yeah. make the whole negotiation uh, go much better. You know, I, I'm here with you. I see you. And now we're breathing together now we're communicating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, um, you know, I had heard, uh, I think it was when I was doing a body electric course, they talked about, you know, a lot of breath work and, you know, people, they, the, the instructor asked how many people have been able to be um, with someone at, at birth. You know, do you have any kids that you were there when they birthed? What did you listen for? You listened for that first breath. Right. And if you've ever had the uh, the ability or the blessing to be with somebody when they transitioned. Right. What do you listen for? You listen for that last breath. But unfortunately, nobody pays attention or most people don't pay attention to all the ones in the middle. And by starting to be more mindful of that, then you you can really live more and mindful of your own breath. Mm -hmm. I visited a doctor yesterday and I got a shot in my knee <laughs> and that can be rather painful. Yes. I know how to handle pain with my breath. Mm -hmm. I don't hold breath. I don't hold the pain. And so as the needle entered, uh, I consciously, uh, and it, 
hardly hurt at all. <laughs> <laughs> letting letting the breath go. Let it that's go. a good way of, you know, even when you, you, we mentioned earlier, you know, if you get mad because the person cuts you off in the, in when you're driving, just taking a breath and letting it go. It's right. Right. You know, who knows what kind of day they're having and it's yeah. just, there's and no what, point getting upset about it. Cause what can you do about it anyway? Now, Wayne, let me just share this with you. Living in Thailand all the years that I did, I was shocked in the beginning. Now, I would not drive in Thailand. <laughs> I'm not that, I, not that crazy. Too risky. <laughs> but, but my friends, many foreign friends, uh, they have cars and they drive and, and I'm w with them. And I'm also riding with my Thai friends and they all mm -hmm. drive. And <laughs> everyone cuts everyone off all the time time and ties do not get alarmed do not get upset uh there it's illegal to do a u-turn on a major street uh, with four lanes two on each side and the big side is there no u-turn and someone is always doing a u-turn and blocking traffic and there are no horns honking and i asked my thai friend one of my best friends why he said oh she has somewhere to go so we will allow that. <laughs> I was impressed. Yeah. Now, it's not true in Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> it's all honking and even crazier. But, uh, but part of the Buddhist philosophy is this allow. Let us allow mm -hmm. others. And they'll allow me. And I fell in love with that. Yeah, that is a very beautiful concept. Mm -hmm. So I, I know when I was in India, in Delhi, um, there was a lot of cutting off in traffic and things. Yeah. Um, I don't remember if there was a lot of horns, though. I, I don't remember now. Okay. <laughs> Something to think about. <laughs> <laughs> and I also would not drive there. <laughs> right. <laughs> Plus, they drive on the wrong side of the street there. <laughs> and that alone is a challenge. It's right. You know, people say, oh, you mean they drive on the wrong side? No, no. They drive on the right <laughs> side for them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I want to really thank you for coming today and uh, talking about, you know, your stories. You have a new book out. Do you want to talk about your book for a minute? It's this sure. is the book. It's uh, in search it, of light and life, vagabond tales, a spiritual journey, yeah, and spiritual it really. Uh, I, I have, as you said earlier in the introduction, uh, eighteen collections and uh, picture books, mostly collections of uh, multicultural tales, traditional tales, uh, folk tales, fairy tales, mm -hmm. myths. Uh, from all over the world, uh, culturally intact. And uh, over these many years, 45 years, I've been in print and all the books are available on Amazon. And I've stayed with the same publisher. Uh, and the books are used primarily in elementary schools and with storytellers and parents for bedtime stories. But the time came for me to write the book I came to write but I had to have my life experience up to age 75 to get it done. And so this is the book where I tell my stories, true stories, traditional tales leading in the chapters, uh, thematically based. And then I, I, so I start with a traditional tale. And then I tell my own story, a personal story of dealing with that chapter. And then I have a conversation with my listener about the aspects of those stories and my listener, my reader's story, because I so much like the feeling of just sitting with you, my reader, and having this conversation. And the chapters, well, there are nine, and I'll just tell you what they are. The first one is birth, something we've all <laughs> experienced, then family, and those are not always easy stories. Uh, no. Then karma. And really the theme of the entire book is exploring and beginning to heal karma in everyday life. Take what you want in this life, but pay for it. There's a mm -hmm. price on everything. Yes. <laughs> so and then the chapter is nature. 
and how we are in nature and the senses, uh, but real stories. Work. Uh, I had a vision that I wanted to make a living telling stories. There was no such thing in 1970, 72. Mm. What I didn't know is that there were at least 11 others in the United States uh, who had the same vision, the same desire. And we became the pioneers of the American Renaissance in storytelling, which is now worldwide. It's one of the proudest things of my life is that I was a participant. I helped to begin something so important as professional storytelling. Uh, then after work is listen, because <laughs> it's only when we really listen that we can learn. The next chapter is courage, because of my stepfather of 57 years. That's just part of the story, but a, a man of courage. And having experienced uh, <laughs> a family where courage was vital uh, and, and gaining the results, the rewards of that, meant so much to my evolution as a human being, being human. Uh, then soul. We all have a soul. And I have a beautiful love story uh, where our souls <laughs> made the connection once again. Uh, and then finally, the chapter on story. Our lives are our story. And, well, <laughs> it's a big story, isn't it? It's an important yes. story. Yeah, it counts. We count. There's a reason for us to be here now. We've earned this space, this place, this prominence, however difficult the struggle. We've earned it and we're, we grow with it. So yeah, I, that's what the book is about. And uh, I promise it's an easy read, but uh, the stories are pretty darn good. <laughs> <laughs> I know I've enjoyed it so far. I'm, I've finished the first two chapters straight through, and then I've spotted, you know, because I wanted to get different, some different stories and things throughout the rest of the book right. before our conversation. So I'm looking forward to finishing the entire book. So it's, okay. again, it's in search of... Uh, Light and Life, Vagabond Tales. Uh, oops, I'm In Search of Light and Life. A Spider Man Journey. Yeah. And it, it's available on uh, Amazon. And uh, if you read it and like it, I sure would appreciate a review. It's very easy to do on Amazon. And just a few days ago, a new review showed up. And oh, it just touched me so deeply because the person got it. Yeah. yeah. And, and enjoyed the book. So thanks. Uh, everyone in advance. <laughs> well, thank you again for joining me. And um, I'm going to just wrap up the show now. So, okay, wait. So much if you just want to hang out for a second in the green room. So, everybody, thank you for joining me today. Whether you're watching this uh, live or whether you're watching this on the replay, Pleasant is a wonderful person, and, and I highly recommend the book. Vagabond Tales because it really and it goes into his life and he he like he said he weaves stories that he's learned or heard in with stories of his own um, his own life and it's really an interesting conversation so thank you for joining us and uh, look for some exciting guests coming up in the next few weeks next week is I'm still confirming uh, the following week I have Freddie Freeman and it's going to be his launch of his new album Golden Heart which is going to, we're going to be talking about that because the launch is the first. So look for those. And now I encourage you to all go out, make a connection and live your best lives. Thanks for joining me.